Uh. Hop it, everybody. I'm Serena Salas Matanani. Chris Barnett. And join us every last Monday of the month for the after party. Where we talk about news and, and views. views. Party. <laughs> The Good Life, all month long on the stations and networks of KUAM. Check the KUAM News app or KUAM.com for all program listings. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, serving Guam for 80 years. Matson and the Adahi Itanu Program. Cars Plus reminds you to put your phone down while driving. Distractions won't get you there. Heads up, Guam. IP&E, fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And steaks, ribs, seafood, and our famous fresh garden bar. Ruby Tuesday, good times you can taste. Tonight on Guam's primetime newscast, originally scheduled to open Wednesday night, the Liberation Carnival has now been pushed back to Sunday. Plus, who is really behind some of these Liberation games of chance? And a bill that could send millions of dollars in Medicaid funding to Guam awaits the President's signature. Mr. Locanto has full details. Avare, good evening, Guam. A developing story as police have converged to the Megillah area, where we've learned that several young adults began attacking several cars with machetes and rocks that were driving along the road to the University of Guam. Uh, one of those individuals' cars uh, which was attacked was uh, belonged to former Senator Judy Guthards, who was leaving the campus. She says about six to seven cars were hit. Uh, she also tells KUAM News she saw a man who was riding a bike struck with a machete. The incident occurred at around 4.30 this afternoon. Uh, KUAM will have more details once information is made available. Our village mayor and vice mayor hitting the jackpot as part of a group that won the bid for Liberation Games of Chance. And who's really behind gambling games? Here's more. Victoria Espinosa, Jonathan Shea, and Fred Cruz, the listed winners of bids to conduct Games of Chance at the 75th Liberation Festivities. But Mayor's Council of Guam Executive Director Angel Sablon says when it comes to who really won Liberation Gambling, what you see is not what you get. This year there's no, no requirement that whoever is investing that they be all uh, come up front and who see who they all are. So that's why I'm saying maybe next year when we do the revisit, because we will revisit these rules, that we will put those provisions in. So do you feel like these two winning bidders are really just like a face behind somebody else's money? Probably, most likely. Two names listed under winning bidder, Jonathan Shea's organization that may raise some eyebrows, Mong Mong Totu, Mighty Mayor Rudy Paco, and Barragata Vice Mayor Jesse Bautista. Sablon confirms the two are part of the winning bidders team, and he doesn't think it's a conflict of interest. They're part of that organization that has to bid. So Mayor Paco and Vice Mayor Bautista are part of the Jonathan Hesse's organization? Yes, yes. But they're not going to share in any profits that are made from the... No, their, their, their involvement is that it's for their community, not for, not for them personally. KUM News got a hold of Shea, who won the bid to conduct Big and Small at the Liberation Carnival. Mayor Paco and Vice Mayor Bautista are listed as, quote, responsible individuals to manage the conduct of games. Shea tells KUAM he met Mayor Paco at a fundraiser. At the time, bidders were required to partner with a nonprofit, but that was thrown out when new rules and regs were made. I asked him, you know, you know, if you were to ever do the carnival, you know, the, the house of cards, you know, would you, or big and small and whatnot, you know, would you be, you know, partner up and whatnot? And he said, yeah. And so I said, okay, you know, and then um, to find out we don't even need a, a nonprofit, but I my commitment to him, and uh, here we are. Shea said Paco and Bautista's involvement with his organization had nothing to do with him winning the bid. He adds his group outbid the next bidder by $20,000. He tells KUAM News Paco and Bautista will not be compensated for their involvement. No, 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 not compensated. I mean, what I did tell him was, like, you know, obviously we would donate to his, you know, his is it the nonprofit. We wouldn't call it compensation. It's more of a donation. 
Both Paco and Bautista declined an on-camera interview, but both said they put their names on the bid to get money for their villages. Sablon tells KUAM Paco and Bautista did not invest money with Shea. Paco says he hopes if Shea makes money, he'll donate some Paco can use for playground upgrades in his village. But Shea says he's not so sure he will donate to Paco or Bautista. Well, that would uh, depend on, you know, obviously how much is uh, brought in, you know. So I can't say, I can't give you a definite answer on that right now. We also asked Shea what experience he had in running games of chance at the carnival. I have a game room, and then, uh, you know, I'm, I mean, I've personally been gambling all my life. <laughs> I don't know if that counts. Paco and Bautista aren't the only ones listed under Shea's winning bid. Kevin Ju and Andy Yao also listed. We asked Shea if he could provide some background on his investors. I can't dispose as well. You know, I mean, that's, those are, you know, those are separate people. I mean, I can't be, like, giving out information about them without their consent. KUAM files show Kevin Ju was a board member for the Overseas Chinese Association Center, which was accused of alleged money laundering and illegal gambling operations as part of a federal investigation in 2010. In that investigation, the FBI was cracking down on illegal gambling operations of the Overseas Chinese Association Center at Paradise Bingo at the Royal Orchid, the MGM Spa, and the Crazy Horse Strip Club. KUAM files also show John Shea's father, Jimmy Shea, was convicted in federal court for his part in a criminal conspiracy to conduct an illegal gambling operation at the MGM Spa. Meanwhile, Sablon says the pressure is on to succeed since mayors fought so hard for games of chance but he adds, at the end of the day, the Liberation festivities aren't all about gambling. While winning bidders haven't gotten their licenses of Revan tax, Sablon tells KUAM News DRT has already cleared winning bidders of any tax liabilities. Well, tomorrow's soft opening of the Liberation Carnival has been called off. According to Mayor's Council of Guam Executive Director Angel Sablon, vendors requested a break because they just came off of participating in the Agate Mango Festival and most recently the Guam Micronesia Island Fair. Sablon tells KUAM News instead there will be just the grand opening of the carnival scheduled for this Sunday at 6 p.m. at the Paseo and yes, there will be fireworks. Collecting taxes and processing vehicle registrations aren't the only challenges Revan Tax is facing. Our Julius Santos has more on what disrupted the department's services for several hours today. At around 4.45 p.m. yesterday, the Department of Revenue and Taxation was in the black, and we're not talking profit margins. According to DRT Director Daphne Mansipit Shimzu, the power abruptly went out, causing the department to close a few minutes early. Unbeknownst to DRT employees, the building had been running on generator power for most of the day. The director says that due to a faulty part in the generator, its automatic fail-safe function kicked in and killed the motor, causing all systems and services to shut down. We were not able to access the island power because there was an issue with island power um, coming into our building, but um, when I went out to check it around uh, close to 5, GPA actually had their tr troubleshooting team here, and we were very fortunate that they were here. Guam Power Authority spokesperson Art Paris confirms the primary cable or service line that leads to the Revan Tax facility needed to be changed out and the work was completed last night. Power to the adjacent buildings was not interrupted. Regarding the generator, the landlord of the DRT building, Joe Ten Inc. of Saipan, had their maintenance crew at the site addressing the issue throughout the evening. Despite GPA crews working to restore power, Mansipit Shimzu and her management team made the decision to take their systems offline to avoid any further problems. And it was a good call, because this morning there was another concern that DRT employees discovered. We also had um, an issue with water, and water um, actually seeping um, into an area which was close to our systems. And so to prevent any problems with our systems, we um, our, yeah, we kept it down. The director says as of 10 a.m. today, DRT systems started coming back online. However, the three main systems, real property tax, driver's license section, and the motor vehicle registration were still down. Director Manspit Shimzu was confident that everything would be up and running by noon today. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Julius Santos. The jury trial for Jose Tenorio Kitagua was scheduled to get underway in federal court today. Kitagua indicted of February of this year. Now, the indictment stemmed from the interception of a package sent through the mail in November 2017 containing 868 grams of the drug ice. The drugs testing 98% positive and pure for methamphetamine hydrochloride. Kitagua is on trial for attempted possession of conspiracy to distribute. Well, stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it.
from smart devices. Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. We value relationships. Because when we commit, I love you, God, until you're 80, until you're 90, until you're 100, forever. We are in it for the long run. So you can enjoy the moments that matter. Because when we commit to relationships, we never stop caring. Calvo's Select Care, health care that is always there for you. The next generation Galaxy has arrived. See it and believe it. The Infinity O display is the most innovative Galaxy screen yet. Capture the wider world. Take stunning photos with a 123 degree field of vision. Use your phone to charge other wireless charging devices. Don't just stand out, stand apart. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. Welcome back. A bill that could mean tens of millions of dollars in additional Medicaid funding for Guam now just needs the president's signature. A Governor Lulia Guerrero, who lobbied in Washington for a special provision in the measure, welcomed the news as much needed relief for the local health care system. Our Nestor Lacanto reports. The House today followed the Senate in passing a $19 billion disaster relief bill, but tucked into that legislation is a provision that waives the local matching fund requirement for Affordable Care Act funds for Guam. Administration Director Edward Byrne explains. The House bill, um, and I hope it's passed as I see the, the first draft, extended to Guam a Medicaid subsidy of uh, 100% for expenditures up to September 30th of this year. So there would no longer be any need for local matching of those Medicaid expenditures. How much in potential funding can Guam expect? Public Health's Chief Human Service Program Administrator, Tess Archangel. That's 47 million uh, on Section 2005 and 24.4 million in Section 1323. We can utilize it. But as Byrne noted, the matching fund waiver is only good until the end of the fiscal year in September, when the Affordable Care Act funding expires. Governor Leon Guerrero testified before Congress earlier this year, saying Guam struggles annually to come up with a local match, losing out on millions of dollars in potential federal funding. And Archangel says they're seeking a more permanent fix. We are lobbying to increase the FMAP federal medical assistance percentage to be the same as the states because in the states it can be from 50 to 83 percent. So we're at 55 percent fixed rate. The governor's office says Guam's Medicaid expenditures have increased by more than 320 percent over the past decade from 26 million in 2009 to nearly 111 million last year. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Licanto. Take Care is now also protesting the judiciary branch's health insurance request for a proposal. Now, the company says it's challenging it for the same reasons as the executive branch RFP. In a news release, Take Care says the Guam Regional Medical City has effectively blocked it from its in-service network, which prevents it from qualifying for government bids. Now, that's because a new law requires insurers to include all hospitals in their coverage, and Take Care doesn't have a deal with GRMC. The two have long been at odds over what the insurer claims are the private hospital's extremely high rates. Now, GRMC counters that it has contracts with every other local insurer. The administration department last month denied Take Care's protest of the main GovGuam RFP. The company has since refiled its protest with the Office of Public Accountability. 
A new bill has been introduced that would require a 90-day waiting period before autonomous agencies can implement any employee salary adjustments. Uh, sponsor Senator Clint Rogel says this bill is in response to recent controversial pay hikes approved by the CCU for top GPA and, and GWA managers, which have since been rescinded. Nestor Lecanto reports. Senator Rigel says he got the idea to force a pause before any raises can become effective from former lawmaker Robert Klitsky. He says the measure follows public outcry over the pay hikes given to utility company executives at a closed-door executive session back in November. It allows the legislature a chance to review it. Now the oversight chair of that particular board of commission can of course call um, that Board of Commission forth to explain the raises and then they would have time to justify the need for the raises and explain for and that just allows transparency throughout the whole process. It does not require that the legislature um, approve or disapprove of it. The bill would also require the chairman of a board or commission to certify to the legislature that the salary adjustments were discussed in an open public meeting. But is this legislative overreach? After all, the CCU was created to be an elected independent commission to oversee the autonomy of our public utilities. Its current members include four former senators and a former director of revenue and taxation. But Rigel says his bill will help ensure the transparency law is followed. Right now, you know, we have uh, CCU members saying, you know, we didn't know. We weren't sure, we weren't sure of it. So, you know, what's that prevent that from happening again in the future with other boards or commissions? Now what prevents it is the board or commission is required to submit a certification. And the pause, he says, will also allow other views to be heard. During those 90 days, it gives the public a chance to review it and take a look at it. And the legislature a chance to review it and take a look at it. And the public to engage and discuss, discuss the raises. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. Meanwhile, CCU Chairman Joey Duenas declined KUAM News' request for comment, saying the commission will do so at the appropriate time. Well, pride flags flying high at Adeloupe for a Pride Month proclamation signing. A full house at the governor's office as LGBTQ community members and pretty much every cabinet member of the Leon Guerrero Tenorio administration showed up for the proc signing. Rainbows everywhere as Magahaga Lou Leon Guerrero told a humorous story about her Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio, the first openly gay Lieutenant Governor elected in the USA. I remember when I asked Josh if he would be my uh, Lieutenant Governor running mate, and I said, Josh, do you have any skeletons in your closet? And Josh goes, well, I'm gay. I said, that's not anything. That's like, that's like an accepted lifestyle. Meanwhile, all government agency heads or designated representative were required to attend today's proclamation signing uh, to sign an equality pledge. Uh, over at the Guam legislature this morning, a resolution was presented to the Guam Pride Committee, Guam Pride, the Guam Visitors Bureau, ISA LGBT Guam, Gala, and the House of Diosa for their ongoing work in promoting the social, economic, cultural, and political achievements of the local LGBTQ community of Guam. Uh, during our starting lineup show streaming on Facebook, we spoke with several members of the community, including Lieutenant Governor of Guam, Joshua Tenorio, who is, again, the first openly elected Lieutenant Governor who's gay in the country. You know, we all went through our different struggles, right? I mean, I was closeted for a little period of time, and I came out, uh, and I came out because I didn't want to lie to anybody. I didn't want to be deceitful. I didn't want to get into a straight relationship and, you know, waste somebody's time. It's just not me. It's so it's so cruel, and a lot of people make their these choices about how to live their life, but there isn't a choice about whether or not uh, you're going to be gay. I mean, this is predetermined and I think that uh, my role I think my job my influence is you know your kid can aspire to do anything and it shouldn't mar matter their sexual orientation so many kids are alienated from their families um, people get kicked out of their homes they're homeless and it's just got to stop and I think if we go back to what the fabric of our community is enough at Malik to take care of your family no matter what then we should have a healthier community you can watch our starting lineup a live stream on our KUM News Facebook page. Hey, David Elgato is next with sports. Agent Alpha. What's that? An Alpha Insurance customer needs a claim settled immediately? I'm on it. Agent Alpha. In the event of an accident, theft, or breakdown, each of our Alpha Insurer agents are trained to go above and beyond. This is my stuff. 
There she is. Target acquired. Yes! At Island Cancer Center, we treat our patients and their families like our family. We have all been touched by cancer, and it is important to feel comfortable and secure under the care of our health professionals. You can count on us for skilled cancer specialists, the most advanced cancer-fighting technology on the island, and a commitment to caring for you or your loved one with compassion, respect, and empathy. Our family, treating your family. Island Cancer Center, located on Guam Medical Plaza. Visit us at islandcancercenter.com or call 646-3363. The Hoffa Day Pledge is definitely is like an extension of the Hoffa Day spirit, which is all about family. And it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. I, I wear this uniform. I'm definitely proud of my job and what we do. I not only live it in the uniform, but outside of the uniform as well. It's definitely a way of life. I live the Hoffa Day Pledge every day of my life. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We'll take a look at this year's Shea Su Ying Scholar Athlete nominees in just a bit. But first off, Footage from this year's Special Olympics Aquatics event. Check it out. Special Olympics Guam wrapped up another successful event for the 2019 season with their aquatics program. 71 athletes of all ages and skill level competed in the 43rd annual competition. After eight weeks of training under their coaches, swimmers hit the pool in the freestyle backswim, float front, kickboard, aqua jog, breaststroke, and float swim back assisted and non-assisted events. Today we have 71 athletes. Of, of the 71 uh, makeup we have, I believe it's 25 that are uh, high schoolers and below, and then the rest are adults. We have about 40 adults that are competing today. And in terms of coaches, it, it varies from uh, you know week to week, but on an average we have about between 30 and 35 coaches that come out. Huge shout out to the staff at Parks and Rec and everyone who helped get the pool open in time for the swimmers to continue their training and showcase their hard work. Richard Ibanez and John Kramer from the Department of Parks and Rec uh, really put a lot of effort into making sure this pool was up and, and going. I guess not only for us but for the public, but it, it fell in really nicely with us uh, because the day that uh, uh, the governor came out and uh, we cut the ribbon on opening up the pool. Uh, it was the same day that we actually uh, held our fourth practice. Special Olympics Guam will continue to give their athletes sports events to compete in and are in the works of implementing badminton and soccer in the near future. The 2019 ITF Kings Guam World Tennis Tour main draw kicked off at the Hilton Resort and Spa Tennis Courts today. Guam National Tennis Federation President Torgan Smith gave opening remarks along with Lieutenant Governor Josh Tenorio. 17 countries are being represented. Spain, Japan, France, India, Sweden, Thailand, Australia, USA, Netherlands, Philippines, Great Britain, Korea, Belgium, Taipei, Saudi Arabia, Slovakia, and host country Guam. Top seed in ITF rank number 133 in the world, Jordi Samper Montana from Spain, and returning players from Japan, Hiroyasu Ihara and Kento Takauchi are vying for the tournament title. To view match draws and results, check out gntf.org. 19 years and counting, the Shea Su Ying Scholar Athlete Awards program has been rewarding student athletes who excel in academics, show outstanding athleticism, and great citizenship and service within the community. This year, scholar athletes have gathered over 90 AP and honors classes, and among them are top graduates of their classes. Many of the athletes are all island and most valuable players champions in their respective sports and boasts an average GPA of over 3.99. Additionally, this class has together volunteered for thousands of hours of community service. Chris Morikami from JFK, Brian Anderson, FD, Matias Calvo, FD, 
Mason Caldwell, Harvest Christian Academy. J. Rong, no, Harvest Christian Academy. Isla Kanata, St. Paul. Naya Kamani Chamberlain, JFK. Alyssa Dimlau, Teezen. Danica Cabrera, Ukudu. Rochelle Tagati, JFK. And Alexia Brown from Guam High. The winner for the male and female scholar athletes will be announced on June 9th and will each receive $2,000 plus an Apple Mac Air. All finalists will each receive the latest version of the Apple iPad. No more cancellations of basketball games, camps, and team practices at the Twin Gym. Bank of Guam, Renovate, ACAS, and GuamBasketball.com have all contributed to the roof repair at the gym and maintenance of the facility. The improvements come in time for the upcoming Summer Jam Youth Basketball Tournament, which welcomes 30-plus teams this summer to the Timunin Gym. Now on the best network and a plan that gives you endless data on chat, social, and music apps. Tell your Docomo Pacific rep you want now with access. Docomo Pacific, better together. Some conditions apply. Yo, Jay, uh, you sure you want to be washing your car right now, man? Not now, Kim. I'm washing Betsy. And she has to be spotless, bro. Clouds are coming in fast. It looks fine to me. Look again. It looks fine, Kevin. It looks fine. You know what makes more sense than Guam's weather? Using your Bank of Guam credit card at any Shell station to save 6% on gas purchases. Call, click, or visit for more details. Make more sense. Bank of Guam, the people's bank. Member FDIC. Check out Triple J's spectacular deals going on now during the hot summer savings event. Zero down and no payments for 90 days. Get into a Kia Sportage or Mazda CX-5 at only $21,995 or $149 per paycheck. The big boy truck, the Ford F-150 starting at $282 per paycheck. Or the Honda Civic starting at only $176 per paycheck. Triple J says yes. Purchase your next vehicle online at TripleJGuam.com today. Triple J, customers first. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shout-outs from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. A very happy birthday going out to Bertha L.A. Paris. Thank you for being a great wife, mother, and grandmother. We love you so very much from your husband, Roman, Anissa, Gianna, Candy, Johnny, Brianna, Funky, and the rest of the family. Remember, you can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamy Birthday Club by registering online at KUAM.com. Uh, please make sure to include with your photo your name and birth date. Now that's going to do it for us here on the KUAM News Desk, but stay tuned. Jason's next with Extra. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E. Explore your world. Health, home, and lifestyle. Presented by Paradise Fitness Center, changing lives since 1996. Off the day, everybody. It is Tuesday, which means we are talking about health, home, and lifestyle. And first off, we start with health. So we bring in my friend Nurse Jen to tell you how to live a healthy island lifestyle. Health Check with Nurse Jen is presented by Island Cancer Center. Hoffaday, I'm Nurse Jen and it's time for your health check. Ginger oil is officially the latest and greatest trend here on Guam. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory oil that is also an antiseptic, analgesic, exporterant, and stimulating bowel substance. It has a thin yellow consistency and it's packed with powerful spicy scent. It has been valued for thousands of years for its medicinal and culinary benefits, particularly in China, India, and Greek cultures. 
According to the latest research article published, ginger and its extracts have shown successful benefits towards treating many inflammatory disorders. Dermatologists and doctors everywhere agree that ginger oil has changed the game because it contains anti-inflammatory markers such as TNF-alpha, IL-6, and IL-10. It's available at most health food chains and supermarkets as either a topical ginger oil applied to a specific swollen site, consumed as a hot tea for an upset stomach, or added to your foods in your stir fry. Dr. Mandan, a board certified dermatologist, routinely prescribes ginger oil to patients who exhibit inflammation, redness, swelling, and pain. It's simple. You can use ginger oil in your food preparation, you can drink it, or you can apply it topically onto your skin. Dr. Madden prescribes ginger oil for anything inflammatory, such as knee pain, arthritis, eczema, and psoriasis. He also recommends cooking with ginger oil to decrease symptoms related to menstrual cramping and to treat nausea, vomiting, or any form of an upset stomach. But research is on the cusp of discovering even more benefits of ginger oil. It's also being used to treat food poisoning, intestinal infections, and bacterial dysentery. And it's shown to provide heart health protection with preliminary studies showing that it reduces cholesterol levels and helps to prevent blood clots, ultimately reducing your incidence of a heart attack or stroke. It's also being used to decrease impotency and prevent premature ejaculation in men. And women, ginger oil, it's rich in minerals and it'll help keep your hair healthy. The oil helps to moisturize a dry, itchy scalp. Even more good news, ginger oil has shown that it can possibly help dissolve kidney stones by keeping an individual hydrated to help expel the stones. Word of caution though, ginger oil is very strong and should therefore be used carefully and sparingly. Ginger oil blends well with many other essential oils including lemon, eucalyptus, frankincense, rosemary, and orange. Email me topics that you're interested in at nursegen at kuam.com. As to till next week, same place, same channel, I'm Jen Artero, registered nurse, reminding you, don't wreck yourself, health check yourself. Health Check with Nurse Jen is presented by Island Cancer Center. Jennifer, thank you very much, and please stay tuned because there is more after this. This would be awkward if you were sharing these nachos with anyone but yourself. Nachos are now a meal with your choice of double the seasoned beef or slow-cooked shredded chicken plus a medium drink. The Grande Nachos Box, only at Taco Bell. A beautiful, healthy smile is an expression of confidence. The more confident you are about your smile, the more likely you are to fully express your feelings without having to worry about the way your teeth look. Before cosmetic dentistry, I didn't smile as much. I didn't have the confidence, and it shows. And since I've had cosmetic dentistry done, I feel 10 times more confident. I make my initial introduction with a nice big smile and a handshake and I just you know feel like it really is a relationship builder a nice warm smile and it makes the clients and customers feel more comfortable with you feeling confident and they feel that you're not just there for business that you're also there kind of as a friend as well so I mean it's amazing how powerful a smile can be a good smile <laughs> since your smile makes a significant impression on those around you it is important that it makes the impression you want it to make. Want to connect with what's going on at home? Check out the KUAM Podcast Network. From entertainment, culture, news, food, current events, and interesting people, listen to us anytime and anywhere. Look for our feed and subscribe in your favorite podcast service, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, and SoundCloud. So subscribe and be constantly connected to the KUAM Podcast Network today. 
Welcome back, everybody. Jason Salas here with KUM News Extra. Isa Baza, my very good friend from the Guam Department of Education, is here with me now. And we are talking about your agency, Isa, which is the largest in Gov Guam. There's a lot of people, a lot of students, but that also means a lot of job opportunities. Definitely. So we're hoping everyone will come out to join us for our job fair happening this June on June 12th at Ukuru High School from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Very nice. Okay, so I'm assuming, and I'm naively assuming, that because you guys are holding the job fair at the end of the year, this is for positions that will begin at the beginning of next school year or is it like in the summer throughout and getting ready for the next school year? So these are our school-based positions that will be starting at the fall. So in August of this year, the start of the new school year, and we're hiring everyone from school teachers to school counselors and school librarians. Yeah, you guys have a huge number of like staffers, positions like all, all across the board and everything. So how many, how many roles are you looking to fill? So as of today, we're looking to fill about 370 positions. So these are at our secondary schools, elementary schools, and also for our special programs. And so to find out more information, I encourage interested job seekers to contact our Human Resources Office. They can provide more information. We also have some of our vacancies on our GDOE website. So that's www.gdoe.net. Very nice. Okay, now I know one thing that a lot of people are going to say because they're hurriedly you know, preparing their LinkedIn profiles right now. Um, there's so many different types of jobs that you could do to serve Guam in GDOE, right? Mm -hmm. um, what type of background do I necessarily have to have? Because even if I don't want to be like a direct teacher, I may be a counselor mm -hmm. or a library, library science person, everything mm -hmm. like that. What, what typically is my background? Definitely. So there are so many different types of, of positions that we're filling. And so, you know, we're looking for diff people with different qualifications. So, for example, we have our teachers. Uh, we're looking for certified teachers. We also have our school counselors, school librarians. We also have, um, you know, other staff that are supporting our schools and special programs, including Head Start, special education, and English as a second language instructors. So there are a lot of different positions that we're filling. Um, so one thing I wanted to note for the upcoming job fair is that we will be doing interviews on site for teaching positions. And so that includes for our teachers, school counselors, and school librarians. So if you're interested in one of these positions, bring your resume, bring your clearances if you have them. Those include our police clearances and court clearances. And you could be interviewed on the spot um, and you may be hired for one of those positions. Nice. So we won't be doing interviews for non-teaching um, non positions, but mm -hmm. we will be accepting applications. Okay, so it's not like one of those things, because some people just think, okay, I'll drop off my resume. I just came from the ranch. I'm in shorts and zories and everything, mm -hmm. and they'll call me at some point, and then I'll you know, put on my mm -hmm. fancy clothes and you know, get all prim and proper. But no, you should mm -hmm. actually put your game face on and show up, right? Yeah, we'll be doing interviews right there on the spot, and we have a lot of positions to fill. The Guam Department of Education is a great place to work. Um, if you're interested in working at the schools, there are a lot of opportunities, um, opportunities for advancement and for growth. And also, um, you know, there's a lot of different areas you can move into, not only at the schools, but also at our district offices. And so if you want to learn more, again, you know, look at those vacancies online. And you can also contact our Human Resources um, Office at 4750496. Okay, and um, I'm wondering, because these are positions in GDOE, are these all, some people might think, okay, I'm looking for full-time employment, I'm looking for part-time work, I'm looking for contractors mm -hmm. uh, work and everything like that. What are the majority of these roles? So are they I all full-time? I believe a lot of these, these are our permanent um, school-based positions, but there are also a lot of other positions, for example, limited term um, positions, part-time positions, and so again, for more of those details, it's best to contact our Human Resources Office. Okay, uh, w are you able to say like what typically is the interview process because if you said people can get you know mm -hmm. interviewed screened hired mm -hmm. right there on the spot providing they have the, the proper documentation do you know like how long does it take and like who would you talk to what types of questions that they normally ask mm -hmm. of you so um i think the for the school-based positions will be interviewed by the school administrators or representatives from the school um, also our equal employment opportunity officer will be there to sit on sit in and also assist with some of these interviews and so they may be asking you things about um, What's your availability? Are you able to work during school hours? Do you, you know, are you able to meet the commitments that the job entails mm -hmm. and things of that nature? And again, you know, um, to work at GDOE, especially with our students, there are some clearances that our um, employees will have to pass. So that includes a police clearance, a court clearance, and drug testing. Mm -hmm. This is also a wonderful opportunity for, let's, let's say, our friends in the military just moved here and mm -hmm. say, like, one, there's a family of four, you know, two parents. One of the parents might be looking for something to do. They can go there, possibly bring education experience. 
Definitely. So yeah. we do have, you know, those um, individuals who move here from off island. Maybe their families are in the military. Maybe they're just moving here. But if they have those teaching qualifications, you know, one thing I want to emphasize is that teachers are very needed all over the nation. So yeah. here in Guam and a lot of different other uh, states, there's a teaching shortage. And so if you have a teacher certification, you can get hired almost anywhere. And so we're always looking for teachers, especially if you're you know, a student, maybe you don't have those qualifications yet, but you want to learn more about um, what you can do to earn those qualifications and the type of careers. It's also a great opportunity for you to come and check out this job fair and learn directly from the people who hire teachers and who work at our schools. Okay, final question, and we only got a few seconds for this, but uh, you see more of DOE than anybody else except for Superintendent John Fernandez, right? In one sentence, what is it like to work for GDOE? It's like working for one big family, you know, you have everyone who really cares about you and it's a very caring environment. We're also caring for our kids, we're caring for our coworkers and our other employees. So it's a great place to work and I encourage everyone to come out on June 12 from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Upu High School. Excellent. I think you'd also be good in the media, I'm just saying. You know? <laughs> okay, Thanks. we'll see you soon. Thank you, Jason. All right, please stay tuned. We're back after this. The next generation Galaxy has arrived. See it and believe it. The Infinity O display is the most innovative Galaxy screen yet. Capture the wider world. Take stunning photos with a 123 degree field of vision. Use your phone to charge other wireless charging devices 